Sean here from Maple Cray, and right now we're going to be doing some creative writing. So let's introduce who's here today. So we have Wayne. Hey Wayne, how's it going? Good, thank you. Brilliant. So Wayne is going to be uh, delivering our creative session today, looking at creative writing, answering your questions, and yeah, yeah. generally being our kind of lead maker for, for today. Uh, uh, we've also got answering your questions and asking them to Wayne. We have got uh, Paul, who is going to be yeah answering questions on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, you name it. Put them in there, he'll be answering, answering them back, yep. and uh, yeah, he'll, he'll do his best to answer some of the the ones himself. But he'll also be asking them to Wayne uh, for the ones more around creative writing and things like that. Yeah, how's it going, Paul? Yeah, great. Got all social media open, every single platform that we're going out on. So don't worry if you're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or anything like that. I will get around to them. Just got plenty of windows open, so uh, I will get around to them eventually. Fantastic. And uh, as usual, controlling the buttons and the sound and everything, we have Ian Pye, who is, yeah, there he is. Uh, hey, as usual with his uh, very close camera uh, <laughs> to, to himself. And <laughs> last but not least, we have Andrew O'Brien, who is our cameraman. He's on the go, he's moving around. So yeah, if you see some cool shots like this, very steady cameras going around, we've got them. And we have a special guest. You might have even seen her then a little bit in the video. We're gonna have Louise from the studio, uh, which is the venue that we're in, coming back later on to talk to us about the studio and some of the cool things that are going on here. All right, that's awesome, that's us. Let's get stuck into it. So, hello Wayne again, how's hello. it going mate? It's going well, thank you. Cool, so Wayne, uh, you do loads of different stuff. and um, One of them is working with uh, creative writing groups here in the studio, is that correct? Yes, that's right, I run two groups here. I'm currently online, because of lockdown, but I run an adult group, um, anywhere from 18 plus, and I run a children's group, which is seven to 11 years old. Fantastic, so like you're saying at the moment, I'm guessing a lot online, Zoom classes, things like that going on with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so how has lockdown affected you? I'm guessing that it hasn't always been online. Uh, no, no, it used to be here in the venue um, on a Friday and a Saturday. Um, but I think one of the good things about the studio is that when lockdown happened, they really pushed the online and the Zoom, um, much more so than schools even did. So I was able to kind of slot my lessons um, into online fairly easily. So I have a Zoom session with the adults um, and a task for them each week. And then I have individual sessions with children on a Saturday. Fantastic, that sounds brilliant. How have the young people and the adults adapted to, to going online? It sounds like you've adapted really well and managed to get your stuff. Have the, have the uh, participants adapted well as well? Yes, it's been a really good response. Um, lots of work. I mean, they both get a task each week to do and we've had loads of work back, which I think we'll talk about later as well. Fantastic, um, yeah. Because we're looking at releasing another couple of books soon, but more of oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. talk about that in a bit. Yeah, so so brilliant. So th that sounds absolutely fantastic. I'll, uh, I'll shut up for a little bit. And I'll let you you crack on with, uh, with, with, uh, with telling us a little bit more about it and the, uh, the things that you've got planned for us today. Yes, okay. Um, basically today, um, talking about how to access your inner writer. Um, it's often said that everyone has at least one novel in them. Um, it's getting it out that can be the problem. Um, and I was thinking when I was putting this together about the things that stop people from writing and what mm -hmm. stops them from having a go. Um, and some of it is a fear of failure. Yeah, it's something that they've never tried before. So they might have a lack of confidence they might have had a bad experience in school or mm -hmm. not the most brilliant teachers um, to help them with their writing. There could be issues with the technical side. A lot of people call the fear of grammar. Mm -hmm. Spelling and grammar and that can put a lot of people off. And then, you know, a lot of people think, well, what's the point? Who's going to read it? It's, um, yeah, it's it's so interesting. You you mentioned those and you're speaking about about those personally. Uh, I've I've got dyslexia, yeah. so uh, English uh, language and literature wasn't my wasn't my strong point when I was in school. Yeah. I didn't have um, the greatest of, t of times with it, and you know I just at one point I just kind of like gone. Oh, well, that's just not me. I'm just not I'm just not great yes. at that. But but as I've got older, I've really got much more into well for work having to get get more you know like yeah. in tune with it. But I also read a lot more for pleasure now myself uh, as good. well, and so I think that. 
but it, it is really interesting that that kind of like that you can get um, a certain opinion or a certain thought of something in school and then you think that's what yeah. it is forever but that can change and that can develop as as you get in older and so and, and it was Very interesting so. like you were saying then about the technology that for me has been something that I've always been quite okay mm. with and quite interested in but you're right that could be a real stopping block for yes. certain people couldn't it yeah. Very much so and a lot of my writers come to me um, say in their 40s and onwards saying they haven't written anything since school mm. uh, they've always wanted to but um, have been put off in some way yeah or they haven't got time and space now lockdowns a funny one because <laughs> all, <laughs> you'd think that would cure all of these mm. well some of these issues because suddenly you've got acres of time but of course that's not the case for everyone no i think sometimes with it as well it's knowing where to start mm. you know with these types of things i know i've been speaking to a lot of people and a lot of them have used lockdown to learn some new skills yeah. or reunite a passion you know for something um, um but and i mean i i'd count myself as, as kind of in this bracket if it came down to kind of creative writing i genuinely don't know where I would start, yeah. you know, in terms of in terms of doing it, and, and some of the things that you were talking about then, it's been really interesting because we've had so many different artists, we've had musicians in, we've had we've been doing some origami, we've had yeah. book artists, in, we've had all sorts, we've had um, uh, Kaz from uh, Makers who does a lot of 3D printing, and we're getting so many strands that are so similar, you know, coming mm. between them. It, you know, it doesn't matter about what the discipline is, you know, there's so many similar things yes. uh, coming through from it. But I completely you know what you mean, yeah, like how, the, what's going to be the thing that ignite someone or how do they get started with it and things so like that. It yeah. was interesting during the first lockdown because um, we had a group of about 10 but we actually ended up with about 25 because they joined during lockdown um, so that was interesting yeah but for some lockdown has kind of dampened the creativity there's a lot of anxiety maybe they're homeschooling a lot so there is a lot of issues with that as well. It was I, I, it was Actually, a, a comedian that I heard who was talking about it and he was kind of going uh, he was talking on his podcast about how he used it to kind of reconnect with his family he's kind of going oh it's actually been you know maybe the lockdown's not too bad maybe it's you know it's this thing and then he had a couple of emails in from from other people and he was like he then apologized and was kind of going he just hadn't realized yeah. how different lockdown has been you know for some people so for some people it's been a chance to reconnect with the family to learn something new whereas for other people it might have been uh you know losses of jobs loss of income yes. a lot of stress a lot of lot homeschooling of when you've not been used to it and things like that and so it's been such although we've all gone through a lockdown together yes. or multiple lockdowns together everyone's experiences that has been completely different and i think it's kind of like it's important to recognize that and just yeah. you know not assume that everyone's going through the same oh, no, experience very yeah. much so it's definitely an odd time um but luckily yeah the studio were very quick to get everything online and the range of stuff that they offer has been incredible i've joined some of the groups oh fantastic yeah, very what, much so what have you joined what have i you... joined the poetry group oh fantastic and also the music group when it was running that was fantastic let me give that a quick plug then for the for the poetry and the music group because we actually had somebody on the social media asking us uh, about um is there going to be any poetry involved in in, in this year's make fest and i kind of said there's not a direct poetry one we're going to be doing a little bit of creative writing today yeah. we've got some shared reading coming on but it's really important that you know what's on in Holt and make fest is such a small amount of some of the creative stuff that's going on in um in and throughout Holton, Holton, Holton yeah. yeah. Do you do you happen to know when when that poetry group is on? If I not, we can cut to Lou. Lou, we've got, got you. We've got you there in the corner, Lou. Do you know? Is it? Twenty fourth of February, the first um, next sort of uh, a lot of poetry socials, and they're now called the Poetry Night Out. Yeah. It is still online, but it will be. Um, Similar to how we did them on a Sunday, the social. So we're going on a Wednesday night now. So yeah, seven o'clock on the twenty fourth of February. Brilliant, fantastic. There That's Lou. Go. There, we might not have got her then at the, at the very beginning. <laughs> Lou's going to be joining us in a little bit. I was wondering if everyone was wondering, where's that voice coming from? What's going? <laughs> what's going on? Lou will be joining us in a little, a little bit to talk more about some of the different things yeah. that, that's going to be brilliant in the studio. Uh, sorry, but but yeah, you you. That's brilliant to hear that you'd use the time yourself to get involved in some of the other creative oh, groups yeah, that were going very on. Very much so. Um, yeah, so I, I thought about the problems and then I thought of some kind of practical tips which yeah. I can share with you. Please do. Um, one of them, <laughs> join the group. Mm. Um, it's a great thing to do because you can get kind of expert tips and ideas. 
you've got the whole socialization side of it and meeting new people um, and what I found with my groups is that as well as learning from me they learn from each other there's an awful lot of like peer reading and they give each other advice they look at each other's work Fantastic. which is what I encourage so, so joining the group is a good so thing just to do. just just to expand on that one, um, we were chatting before, and I know you mentioned it then, you've got a, younger, a group for young people yes. and then we've got a, an 18 plus group. Um, how would somebody go about joining one of these groups if they were interested in taking part and wanting to, to, be, to be part of it? What's the kind of process for them to, to join in? The process for that, and stop me if I'm wrong, uh, the no. email the studio and then Lou would pass it on to me and Fine. then I would get in touch with them. Is Fantastic. that about right? Yep. Oh, the, and Ian, look at that, the magic there. He's got the studio website up on the screen yeah. for you there. So if you go on there, I'm sure that you'll be able to find emails and contact yeah. details for how you can get in part. Don't ring them this second, though, because we're going out live. So yeah. we don't want the phone <laughs> ringing in the background. But, uh, but yeah, if we, if we go to, uh, if we do a, an email uh, to them, that'd be fantastic and, and a great opportunity for, for you to get it stuck in. And again, just bring it back to some of the other streams that we've had. So many people with the same advice, that, yeah. that concept of getting out there and getting stuck in and, and doing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And it is a leap, but yeah. but yeah. So, you know, another thing I was thinking about is what the different types of writing that we do. So a lot of people, you know, they say they have a novel inside them, but it doesn't have to start with the novel. It, that's a massive piece of work. So the kind of things I've worked on is writing short stories, um, fiction ones, but we have done some non-fiction. We did some autobiography work, which was interesting about the writer's own lives. Uh, we've done poetry, um, we've written monologues for a short drama piece. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of realising that it doesn't have to be the full-blown novel, you know. I, I was only thinking, I, I read quite regularly uh, and one of the things, that I, I'm a slow reader uh, yeah. and, and so sometimes when I start a book if we're talking 300 400 page book you know something like that it's going to take me a long time normally i know i read at night so i get a couple of pages yeah. in before i know it. i'm reading the same line a couple of times and that's normally when i know oh i'm going to go to sleep now <laughs> and they yeah. put the bookmark in digital bookmark um so i was thinking recently do you know what i would love some short stories you know yes. something where I, I got you know i don't need to spend months trying to get through this it's something that you can do in you know, in one or two sittings Very you know, much and stuff. So. yeah that and would be. it is an art form in itself yeah in fact, in many ways, writing a shorter story, you know, you've got to encompass everything, but in a much shorter space of time. Mm. So it is a skill. And it's funny you mention reading, because if you want to be a writer, reading, it sounds obvious, but reading is a good thing to be doing. It's like almost like a free writing lesson when you read, because yeah. uh, you get taking in all of that grammar and punctuation just subconsciously. Yeah. And, when yeah. when you're reading yourself, I'm I'm a big e-reader. I love to go on, uh, on yeah. and get the e-book. Are you a, are you a hardback, paperback, or like a real I'm a world traditionalist? Or, traditionalist, yeah. yeah, with with, with yours. Um, yeah, we had. Of course, we've got to give a big plug to the library who were here uh, on Tuesday doing those. And so um, uh, you can still, if you're in Holton, they've still got the. Um, they were telling us about a fantastic service that they do where they um, they'll give you recommendations. So you tell yes. them the type of thing you're interested in. They'll bag it all up, put it together for you, and you can go and collect it. So yeah, if you're into your um, real uh, book, re physical yeah. reading, you can still get them from the libraries uh, as well. In fact, and, and one of the other things they were plugging was, was BorrowBox, which is the digital platform, which I'm a big fan of as well, and that you can get digital titles from there as well. So Fantastic. I think that's one of the nice things about, about reading in English, is seeing how it's, um, embrace technology kind of like as it's going forward and it's not kind of going oh well, everyone's got a screen now so we're, we're no longer yeah. reading it it's you know it's, it's how it's adapted no, it's and how balanced how everyone has it Do you know what it is for me with the digital one it's um being dyslexic and, and sometimes struggling with uh with reading and writing is the uh, the ability to hold your finger over a word and go oh, i don't know what that word yeah. is and suddenly it, it pops up instead of having to run and get a dictionary and, and come back and stuff and and even getting it to uh to speak it out to you so you know you're yeah. pronouncing it rightly as you oh, go oh there's as loads you go of benefits it. like yeah. even the font size changing the font, font size, size yeah color can help i i reverse it so it's a black background with white text because yes. i'm reading at night so it's not too uh too light in my eyes but yeah there's 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 lots of different bits and bobs from it, isn't there? Yeah. Sorry, carry on. No, no. It's yeah. okay. um, on the technical side, I mean, a lot of people fear using a laptop or mm. a computer or a tablet. But if you're worried about grammar, <clears throat> and I say this to my writing group, if you can use the word person, it doesn't have to be Microsoft Word. It could mm. be Google Docs, which is free. But that 
that does help with the spelling and grammar mm -hmm. because of the inbuilt spelling and grammar check. Yeah. Which which is not cheating. <laughs> I use it, it and 99% of the time it's right. Yeah, it better not be cheating because otherwise I'm the biggest cheat there is. No. Like, yeah, yeah. Grammarly um, is I've got to, I've got to, it's a it's a free plug in that that's changed my life in yeah. terms of knowing where you know where your full stops and where your commas need to go and things like and that. It's perfect. Yeah. And yeah. You know, it's a good thing to use. I tell my writers before you send it to me, make sure you've spelt checked it. Yeah, in grammar. And um for tips about actually, you know, physically writing, um, I choose a space in the house, which is nice and quiet, and it's that space that I write in all the time, and that can be important, just to have that peace and quiet. And maybe start off small as well, maybe just an hour a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of breaking it down and making it comfortable. You could even start with poetry. You know, if you think that a short story is too long, then start with a poem. You know, the novel can wait. It's, it's really uh, interesting. And I don't know if you kind of agree or disagree with it, but I saw it in a, um, in a tweet, actually, that, that went out. I, I'm, I'm butchering this because I don't, can't remember who tweeted it, but it was, it was on my, I found it really interesting where they were talking about the idea of writing 100 words. And they were kind of going, if you do that uh, a few times a week, yeah. suddenly you've got a thousand words. And then suddenly if you do that for a year, then suddenly you've got, Absolutely. you know, thousands of words, you know, and, and it not necessarily needing to be a sit down and write a 1600 word, you know, thing no. or a 5,000 word and, you know, or anything like that. You can, you know, you can do it in bits and spurts and you Absolutely. can kind of like take your time with doing it. And I, I thought about it and thought, oh, that, that is quite interesting because suddenly the idea of going, I'm going to write a hundred words today or something really small that yeah. I'm happy with or I'm pleased it's with. It's accessible, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It's not so dull. And I think accepting inside that your first efforts may not be uh, the best, but to get it out, you can always revisit it. But sometimes the actual act of writing, even if you're not sure where you're going, clicks it into place and it gets you moving. That, that safe place and it to takes failure. takes the pressure off, yeah. That, that you were talking about before, yeah. that, that, that idea that not everything that you have to write, particularly the first things if it's you're doing oh, it, has yeah. to be a masterpiece. You know, no. you, you'll learn a lot from doing it and trying yes, it. Yes, you will. Like, yeah. you just, just start, just have a go, except it might not be brilliant, but jump in, have a go. That's awesome. Um, just another couple of things. Yeah. Um, so joining the group is good. So mm -hmm. making that leap to be a writer is something that ultimately you have to decide to do, but you don't have to do it on your own. Um, so, you know, group is a good thing. The reason for writing should always be firstly for yourself, you know, mm -hmm. for your own enjoyment, for your own pleasure. But ultimately, you may want to share it. And that's what I'm going to move on to now. Publishing Fantastic. is possible and it's easier than it ever has been. Fantastic. Just before we jump into, yes. the, into the next section, I believe that we've had a, a couple of questions through, or at least a question through, Paul. Is that correct? Uh, you can go crazy with uh, comments. I put a question out to start with. Um, and my question was favourite authors. Favorite oh, fantastic. And uh, we've had quite a few different ones. We've had David Williams, Jane Austen, uh, Stephen King, loads of different types of authors. And we've had a specific question that comes through that links perfectly to what we're going to move on to next. And it comes from Helen. And her question is, have you ever written a story by starting uh, thinking about the character first and then developing the story around that character? Mm, that's an interesting point. Yeah. Um, I haven't, that's not, that's not the way I work. I'm kind of plot driven, but I know that a lot of my writers um, do that. They come up with the central character first and then the story starts to build. Mm. Uh -huh. So if it helps, then definitely that's a good yeah, way to go in. Yeah, I was just about to say, it's kind of what works for you, isn't it, yeah. to get that story? Very much so. Again, I, I'm going to just keep saying the same thing, but it's so interesting hearing that. We had, we had a question um, to Natalie McCool the other day, who the, the musician, it was asking about, do you start with drums first or this first? And yeah. she, she was like, well, it's whatever comes to me. You know, and I think with creative writing, you've seen that, that kind of like, you know, you might have someone that has that character idea first, or you might have someone with a plot, or you might, you know, whatever it is that, that, that comes to you. My favourite author, why I'm on it, Rachel Abbott. I really, really like her. She's a, she's relatively local. I really enjoyed oh. it when I was reading her 
book. I believe she, I think she's based in Manchester, but it was really I found it really nice when you were reading the story thread that you knew the locations. Yeah. You know when you're reading yeah. some authors from America or Australia or wherever they may be, and you kind of picture the locations and you had there's something very nice about that. But yeah. that real thing of kind of going, oh, I, I know exactly what Deansgate is. I do Deans actually Gate know is. this place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't have to make this up. I know exactly what that is. Yeah, and that, that it sounds like a simple thing, but I it just yeah. that was the first time that I'd, I'd had that when I was reading her work, and I thought it was really powerful and interesting to. Uh, to do any anything else, sir, Paul? Before we move on to it, or are we good to go? Um, we had um, a recommendation for people who are from Learning Lab for people that are use, uh, starting creative writing, and they said try using uh, Night Zookeeper. I don't know if that's uh, if that's something you come across before, but that's a recommendation. Night Zookeeper, not something no, that, that I have. I have, but if it helps, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll and go to, with we'll it. We'll have to do some googling, and, and I'm, uh, I'm going to get onto that now. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, brilliant. All right. Well, we'll come back to Paul uh, as and when uh, any comments or questions come through. So, thank you for everyone that sent in a question then, or an idea, or a concept. Uh, we'll always pass them on to Wayne to get his thoughts on them. Uh, yeah, if you've got any questions or any thoughts, yeah, get them in there and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be sure to, to pass them on. So yeah, uh, back over to you, Wayne, sorry. Lovely, yes, so um, when I said before about starting with um, a short story, um, this is our collection of short stories that we self-publish with Amazon from the Adult Writing Group. Um, and that was an interesting process because mm -hmm. um, it wasn't like I knew how to do it. So we kind of learned together bit by bit in every stage of um, production they were involved in. But what that also gave them then was the skill to go away and self-publish themselves if they so chose to do so. And we start, we actually started um, with an e-version of it, Kindle version. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that went on sale first. And once we got our heads around that, we decided to have a go at a printed copy. And how was that process for you? Was it one of those, was it, like, I love that, that was one of the things that, that I loved about the idea of concept. Like I always say, when I was at school, the concept yeah. of writing a book and then publishing it and someone being able to buy it seemed yeah. like something that was just so far away, so impossible, and you're know, like, as a yeah. type of thing to reach. And although I've not done that, so it's not something I've, I've done myself, but it, you know, seeing groups like yourselves do this and, and people being able to, to self publish and get it, you know, even as an ebook or even yeah. brilliant, you know, as, as a physical book, it's very inspiring for other people that, that you know, that, that might be interested in Well, doing there that. is an end product then, yeah, isn't yeah. there? If you do want to share. How, how did you find that whole process? Was it an easy enough thing to get around or was there challenges along the there way? There was challenges <laughs> along the way, it's safe to say. Amazon has its own very specific um, programs that you have to use to do it. Yeah. So you have to get your head around yeah. it and it's got its own, yeah. So we started on Microsoft Word, you upload it and then you're in their program, mm. you prepare it for publishing. But yes, it was a l quite long. <laughs> the first one was quite a long process. Um, but yes, it just shows that it is possible. Definitely. And uh, that led on to this, which was the second one that we did. This is by Paula Page, the hair with the green eyes and other stories. And what's nice with this one is that, you know, they were talking about starting with a character. She actually starts with her own illustrations. Lovely. So she does an illustration of something and then she writes the story around that, which is, I'd never heard of that approach before. I think that, that might be nice for me. I, as I was saying with the Rachel Abbott one, I really like that I, yeah. I knew the area. So I love that idea of I'm going to see the picture first and get that, that concept in and then maybe I don't have any imagination. Maybe I need someone to really... Yeah, no, but it really, really works for her. Yeah, and she's included photos, uh, real life photos as well of locations um, around Liverpool that she's based on. So that was a leap forward again, using images and colour mm. for the first time. And I think if we can have yeah. a look at just so, the other two that are online, because so, I haven't got a physical copy of those. No problem. So what we did, Blue Peter style, is we uh, got Paul to load uh, those up on his uh, computer <laughs> over there. Uh, Andy, could you grab a uh, quick look at uh, Paul's computer over there so we can uh, take a look at these? So we've got two more uh, that, are, that are up and are available on Amazon. So if anyone would like to... Uh, to purchase uh, these books, so they are they are more than we'd be more than thrilled if yeah, to, uh, to, to oh, take a look. Oh yes, so. there we are. That's never a, a crossword by Richard Bradshaw. He's one of my adult writers. That's a collection of short stories as well. 
Fantastic. And the next one. And then we've got uh, Pelidas Morris. It's hard to pronounce. Yeah. But it's a collection of horror stories by a writer called Mark Gilmore, who again was one that had come for never writing since school, but he'd always had, loves horror, loves Stephen King, came to the writing group, saw what we were doing, in fact, both of the, these people did, and then went away and did it themselves at home without me and wow. self-published That's their amazing. Own books. Do you know what I've not done? I've never really read too much horror in a, in a book before. I've you know, seen it as a, as a film, as a yeah. TV show, something like that, but, but never read, read, read too much horror. I have I did, did a tiny bit of Stephen King in the past, one, one or two, but not, not at first. So, so it, that'd be really interesting. I might have to check a lot of these out myself, yeah. especially for the short stories <laughs> element of it. I think, I think that'd be really handy for me, as I say, so I'm not spending uh, months and months and months on yeah. the same book uh, trying, to, trying to get it done. But that's absolutely brilliant. And really nice, again, like you said, that um, it's not just the idea that you come and be creative just in these sessions that you're, that you're doing, much but so. that, that you are taking what you're learning from that session. Yeah. Uh, you were saying that you, they, you give them tasks to do each week and they send them back to you, yes, is that correct? very much so. And I think we're going to talk about the upcoming studio books oh, towards the end. Fantastic. Yeah. I look forward to, uh, to finding out more which, about what's coming out which next. Which Louise knows about as well, very much so. They're in the pipeline as we speak. Um, Right, I was going to take you through some practical tips now. Perfect, yeah, for let's writing. do that. Um, and this is an example, actually, of um, one of the tasks. Um, so they were numbered every week. Um, and this stuff at the top, I used to set them a lateral thinking question and a starter just to get their brains moving. Okay. That would be on a separate document. But this is actually a real one, which was sent out to both the children's group and the adults. So I'll take you through this. Yeah, please do. And try and give us some practical tips for when you actually start writing. One of the things we said we'd actually do is, we were saying that this is quite a long process. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, go through this and we would love it if you could do this uh, task mm. in your own time and if you write something creative as part of this test please send it in to us if that's through Twitter or Facebook or uh, Instagram or via an email anyway we'd love to find or hear your stories or your ideas that you come up with it uh, if it's going out on either socials hashtag uh, Holton MF21 that's our kind of go to hashtag fancy in there throwing it up on me i like to keep him on his toes uh, as as we're doing it but yeah we are on facebook which is at halt and make fest uh and we are on uh twitter halt and make fest and on instagram halt and make fest so whatever platform works best for you uh and you can even email us at info at halt and make fest.co.uk i don't think we have a graphic for that but <laughs> if you remember it, then, then there you go. Info at Mako, uh, not Mako, great. Info at HaltonMakeFest.co.uk. Yeah, let's uh, let's jump back and let, let's get get cracking. Then let's have a go at it. Okay, so this task in particular um, was about a piano. Whoop. Whoop. There we go. Um, so I would give them a, like a little starting point. In this case, it's I was just drifting off to sleep when I heard the out of tune tinkle of the ancient piano coming from the downstairs room. This was odd for two reasons. One, the piano hadn't been played in years. And two, I lived alone. So already you're getting the kind of sense of this. It gives them something to work with. And then I sometimes, not always, but I give them an opening paragraph. Okay. Yeah, just to get them going. So summoning up all my courage, I slipped out of bed and cautiously made my way into the hall. As I headed to the stairs, the tune began to take on some meaning for me. It was one that I had definitely heard before, although I could not quite remember where or when. So that would be their inspiration. And then what I would encourage them to do is just a very short plan, mm -hmm. nothing too heavy or major, um, just an idea of what year we're in where are we well that's really interesting i like my my whole instinct then was to kind of go right let's get right and let's go what, where are we going next how, yes. are we go, how are we doing it you know like this is what i and um, i think um, sometimes probably the danger with that is that uh, i'm always guilty of uh, even I, I don't they do any creative writing but even when i'm writing about anything I assume everyone knows what I'm thinking yes. about, you know, and I'll, I'll kind of write from my point of view and kind of just 
assume that people know exactly what I'm talking about, exactly what I'm thinking about. And yeah. I'm guessing that putting that plan down will really help you make yeah. sure you're including those details. And, and it just takes through. five minutes. Yeah. And, and if anything, it helps the reader, but it also helps you to yeah. kind of figure out where are you. I bet there's loads of times as well when you do questions like that and it's like, you'd not even thought about it yourself. You know, you just kind of like started going off on it and then back, but just by having a yeah. step back and just thinking about it, you kind of go, okay, so I can go here with that information. Now I've kind of thought about it and yes. I've planned it and you, you kind of not veering off from your own kind of like uh, creative, creative restraints sometimes, isn't it? It's yes. quite nice to kind of go, okay, so this is what I'm playing with. This is what I want to move around with. It gives with. Yeah. a kind of framework just to work within. Yeah. Yeah, but you still get very different stories oh, back, set in very different times. Some in the fifties, some in the nineteen hundreds, some set in the present day. And one one thing I would say with a story like this is you're going to have to sort out the phone, internet, mobile plot issue. Because mm, okay. if you've got a mobile phone and a phone line and the internet, then you can solve anything that goes wrong pretty quickly. <laughs> so. You've got to get rid of access to any of these things in this scenario. That's really interesting. Yeah, so, there's, and I guess there's a few re ways that you could do that. You know, it could be that maybe yeah. you just don't have them on. Maybe it's the 50s, like you were saying. So yeah. those things, you know, like, That's what I was yeah. thinking. Maybe the weather's took the phone line out. Uh, yeah. But you see that a lot in horror films where very quickly they establish, oh, I've got no mobile signal. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there'd be right some very boring start. phones, wouldn't it, if everyone just sat there googling the answers to everything, but yeah. Yeah, no, so no, can it, you come it, and help? Yeah, right, that's the end of the story. <laughs> yeah, so you've got to get rid of that. Whoop. Right, I'll just very quickly take you through this. Um, I don't want to bombard them with loads of technical info today, so mm -hmm. this is something that I can remember. Um, it's maps. If you look down the side, it spells out maps. So it's quite an easy kind of thing to remember. And that is metaphors, adjectives, adverbs, personification, if you can do. Punctuation is important. And this last one, the senses, is always a great one because when people are writing, they always write what they can see. Um, but if you get stuck and you don't know where to go, you can talk about what you can hear, what you can feel, if there's a smell and it's a really useful skill to have. So I've just took that paragraph, and as you can see there, I've just kind of highlighted it, and just added a few small things to it um, to make it a little bit better. Um, so I'll read through it and just talk. I mean, the yellow ones are the most obvious ones. That's just the describing, and they're a good place to start and get it all on screen that might make a bit more sense okay. yeah okay so summoning all of my courage i slipped quietly out of the safety of my warm bed and cautiously made my way into the dark and dingy hall so already mm -hmm. it's starting to sound better and that's from just using adjectives and then you get the slightly harder skills uh, personification the moon stared coldly through the landing window quietly observing my progress as I headed to the gloomy stairs. And then, to chuck a bit more punctuation in, just a few rhetorical questions. Who on earth could be down there? Why are they here? What do they want? And already that's kind of involving the reader a lot, and it's quite an easy skill to use. So pondering these questions, I reluctantly arrived at the stairway and paused. For, as I nervously gazed down at the murky hallway below, the tune from the tinkling piano, so using sound, gradually began to take on some meaning for me. It was one that I had definitely heard before, although maddeningly, I could not quite remember where or when. Remaining elusive, this hazy memory only added to my growing sense of unease. Another heavy weight rested upon my already tightening chest. And there's a little dot, dot, dot ellipsis at the end as well, using punctuation. So it depends what level you're at, but you can access yeah. these skills it, and it makes such a difference to the paragraph. No, it does. It, it sounds beautiful then when you, when you, when you oh, read it out and you're going you. through it. It's the same paragraph. It's still got everything yeah. that the top one had, but now. 
So with uh, with a process like that, mm. um, I, and again, I, I suspect that we're going to have already answered this with everyone's different. But but would you go through the would or would the average writer probably write it a little bit like the first one and then go back and retroactively yeah. kind of like yeah. make it more interesting, or, or or people just gifted with just being able to do that? No, off the cuff? I think it depends on your skill level, and it yeah. is a skill, and it's something that you practice. Yeah. For me, I just get the idea out first and then go back and have a look. Yeah. Yeah, and I might have added some of the adjectives naturally, but some of the other stuff I might have to actually think about and put in. Yeah. So it depends on where you're at and it's, what your level of writing is. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting, even if I'm writing a, a bid or an evaluation or a report on something like that, you know, it's interesting with mm. the way that you brought that down. I'll probably sit there and go, these are the key things that I need yes. to make sure I mention, so I'll just bullet point them. And then I'll probably add them a little bit more into a, a sentence yeah. and then try and knit them all together. And so it's really interesting that hearing like, it's a, I can imagine you could take these skill sets and put it through all your writing, you know, like whether oh, yeah. it's, you know, a creative writing story or, you know, Definitely. something as boring as an evaluation like I have to do, but spice it up a bit and make it more interesting for, for people that are what, doing it. What's happened is interesting. Um, the difference between my adult group and my younger group. Mm. Um, with the younger group, they tend to go for plot straight away. They mm. want to get it out. They want to move forward. They want to move to move what happens next, what happens next. Mm. And it's teaching them the skills to slow down a little mm. and just try and describe what's happening. But that's the beauty of the word process, isn't it? You can just go back and add. And a lot of the kids, well, and the parents have said it's a skill that's really helping them in school as well. It, it's, it's really interesting when you say that. I, you can't help sometimes but relate it back to your own work that you do, can you? And I remember uh, back in the very first years that we, we set up Make or Create, we would go around and do film clubs with young people out there. Yeah. And, and a big part of that would be them coming up with stories and then you know create, making the films for them. And I remember me and Ian would be out and about uh, teaching and uh, the young people would want to just do one shot and do the whole sh yeah. the whole film in that one shot. With it. And you're kind of going, oh, so we're going to look at different camera angles. We're going to think about how we're going to shoot that so that we can get this point across. Does this need to be close up? Does this need yeah. to be far away? And even though it's, you know, it's not it's not language that's being used, it's that, that no, idea it's of that like- No, it's that same idea yeah, yeah. Like and moving forward. Yeah, and yeah. Just slow down. Yeah, and yeah. Slow down. <laughs> yeah. They always yeah. wanted to just get one shot and do it, do everything like a uh, blow witch style in front, of, yeah. in, front of, in front of the faces. But um, but no, that it, it's it's great. And and so what uh, with the adults, how do they approach it differently in general? Um, yeah, they they seem to approach it in a slower kind of. Well, I don't know how long it takes them to write it, but mm. the work that they give to me already comes with oh, with that bit, and yeah. some. I don't do a lot of correcting with them. Yeah. Um, there's some skills that some might need to work on, but generally I work on praise and mm. praise what they've done. Um, but I do teach the adults the skills just like I would yeah. the children. And then depending on their level, they can take what they want from that and it's, slot it in or we, add another little skill to the <laughs> toolbox, as it were. We get asked that quite a bit, you know, how do you differ your teaching from adults yeah. to young people? And, and I don't know about yourselves, but for us, we, we take not that much, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> no. it's normally pretty much exactly the same. They need, they want to learn the same things. And, and although, although you might phrase something, or you give a slightly different example, yeah, so it's slightly, more relevant. Yeah. It's, it's a very similar process for, for teaching yeah. both, both age ranges. So that's, that's great. But just, just, yeah, just to point out again that if these skills here, just those map skills, they mm. can be used in poetry. You know, you don't, it doesn't have to be a short story. Can we just go through those one more time? Those, yes, those, those, yes. Those, so those the, the M in pink is the metaphors. That's quite a high level mm -hmm. skill. Um, adjectives and adverbs. Um, personification, which is when you give uh, human qualities to something that doesn't have it. It's okay. a kind of metaphor. In my case, it's the moon staring coldly and observing. Um, punctuation. And the one I always fall back on and stress is the senses. Just kind of bring it alive, all those different senses. Brilliant. 
That's absolutely fantastic. So, uh, we'd just like to say, yeah, if, if anyone has oh, uh, yeah. remembers that remembers that 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 beginning, could we get that beginning paragraph one more time, and then yeah, yeah. if you would like to uh, to to do your own paragraph or, or, or text afterwards, please do and, and send it into us. We'd love to uh, to have them. Don't feel the pressure to get it back to us during this live stream, but but if you do, we'll get Paul to read it out. But if not, we'd love to see it afterwards. No, that would and, be great. great. Yeah. So if we we'll, we'll just have that first paragraph one more time so that we've got the uh, the bit that they want to um to to move on to after it yeah. so if you wouldn't mind reading that out again that'd be yeah fantastic. very much i was just drifting off to sleep when i heard the out of tune tinkle of the ancient piano coming from the downstairs room and this was odd for two reasons the piano hadn't been played in years and i lived alone so summoning up all my courage i slipped out of bed and cautiously made my way into the hall as I headed to the stairs, the tune began to take on some meaning for me. It was one that I had definitely heard before, although I could not quite remember where or when. Mm. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, as we were saying before, maybe make some jots down, make some ideas, make some notes about where you want it to be set, things like that, and then have a go at, at, uh, at putting together your own your own stories to go along with it. Yeah, I look forward to, uh, to seeing them and, and, and seeing how we get on. Fantastic. I just talked very briefly before we go to some Please. videos, which yeah, would yeah. be nice. Um, just the benefits of doing it, because it can be a scary thing to kind of take that leap in the dark, that mm. first step. But, you know, I've spoken to both groups and they say it gives them a lot of self-confidence and a lot of pride as well. It's a sense of achievement. Um, but also it's an escape, like uh, creative freedom, and especially during lockdown. Um, there's a, a quote which I use with both my groups from a, a man called Amit Alton, who was actually imprisoned in a Turkish um, jail which won't go into now. <laughs> but the quote is, you can imprison me, but you can't keep me here because like all writers, I have magic. I can pass through your walls with ease. So even though you are in lockdown, and you're feeling trapped, it can be a great way to escape and go anywhere with your writing. I think what, one of the really nice things about it as well is uh, as a creative suit, it's not something that you need to have uh, lot you know like a pen and paper you know like yeah. or, or a computer yeah. or a tablet or a phone even potentially you know to, to write onto and you get you not know, down on it's not something that you need to have a really expensive piece of equipment to be able to, no. to kind of all you no, need to have not. is the uh the the fire the hunger the the kind of like uh it's not ability is it it's the um the get up and go to have a go at doing it you know to to, to try it out yeah. to, to and it is a form of expression like music like mm. drama like art you know one of my writers said that we've all got these feelings and thoughts and doubts and experiences and they have to come out somewhere. This mm -hmm. is why I write. And that's what one of my writers said. And then you get the, the social side as well if you do decide to join a group. You know, it's new friends. We've done lots of projects together. And it's that sense of belonging and support, I think, that they've taken, especially during lockdown, that we are still out there and we are still working together. I would say that my, my lessons with the adult group are half writing, half therapy. <laughs> um, and that was before lockdown. <laughs> yes, I include myself in that. Yeah. Right? Brilliant. And I think that's what I would say. It, you know, stop waiting, start writing. Yeah. Brilliant. That, that's 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 fantastic. Thank you so much for, for, for going through that with us. Uh, as you said, we've got a couple of examples, yes. haven't we? So we've got uh, two videos, uh, one from the younger group and one from the older group. Uh, I think we're going to start with the younger group. Is that right, Ian? Do you want yeah. me to explain what, what yeah, they are? Yeah, please bit? do. Yeah, so if, if, if you uh, give us a bit of a, an intro into, into what these videos were, and then we'll get, we'll get uh, Ian to, uh, to, to start yeah. them up. Fantastic. Um, these were um, projects that we did for the Christmas studio special. Um, and we co-wrote. This is a good example of why joining the group is good, because we wrote these together. So one is a poem, one is a story. Um, so we all wrote a section and then we put it together and then perform it. That was the adults one. Um, and the kids did the same, but with a Christmas story. So I gave them a brief instruction for each paragraph and we had a pretty solid idea of what the story was, but then they go away, write their paragraph. I put it all together. And in this case, it was videoed, wasn't it, at home? Yeah. 
So they videoed it and sent it in, and then it was put together as a whole piece. So that's a good example of just doing a small bit of writing, mm. but still taking part. Yeah. Yeah. Very r nice way, really nice way to, yeah. to kind of get involved. Very much. So. All right. Let, let's, uh, let's roll that VT then and let's have a look at uh, this first video. Here we go. A cat as dark as a night sky was sat meowing under the light of the moon. His fur was fluffy like a cloud, soft and silky. His eyes were bright and glistening, with whiskers as smooth as blades of grass. His nose like a small leathery button, which was his power of sniffing out predators. His tongue was rough like sandpaper, with little spiky teeth that were as sharp as hog. The hat, the hat he wore was cherry red and trimmed with white in white fur, topped with a bauble of matching fur decorated with black cats and sparkles which twinkled in in the Christmas light. Olivia sprints into the living room to tell Mum and Dad about what she saw last night under the Christmas tree. Mum says, what are you talking about? We don't have a cat. Then Dad says, you must have had a bad dream or something. Suddenly, the cat reappears in the same spot it was last night. Olivia shouted, look, there's the cat. Mum said, what are you talking about? There's nothing there. Olivia started to get angry and shout. Olivia's mum said, go to your room now and stop that attitude. Okay, and that's brilliant. And you can definitely see the Christmassy themed uh, elements that are going on there. And, and another element that's, that's great that the studio brought in then was um, obviously we talked about ebooks and physical books, but yeah. the, the filming of it and the putting together is almost like a performance as well. So, yes. so many ways that it can, that it can be move on to each other. So, uh, we've got another video uh, as well of the older group, I think, as well. So, we'll, we'll play that now uh, and have a quick look at this video. Is there anything um, different about this one with the way it was set? Up, or was it the no, same? no, it's the same idea. It's yeah, the same idea. All right, let's see how this one turned out then. It's a month before Christmas, and all through the house, decorations are hanging, and we're not even scouts for the years 2020 when COVID ran rife. So we thought we'd fight back and bring cheer to our life. Let's illuminate witness with tinsel and berries. Who cares if it's early? We need to be merry. We shouldn't need food banks, but people are kind. Thank God as the government really don't mind if children go hungry and cry in the night while the fat cats are laughing. My name's Jack, I'm all right. So let's have us a Christmas we will always remember. There's not much else better to do in December. Any unhappy thoughts we can try to diminish as we bring this sad year to a positive finish. Deep into the lockdown and all through the land, the people are mourning the Christmas they planned. We'll gather together whatever the cost they weep for a future they've already lost. And though they all know that this virus can kill, they'll risk it for a bout of post-dated goodwill. We must have our Christmas, the festive season, or reap the reward of our cultural treason. No tinsel, no turkey, no full house full of lights, no squabbling kids, no family fights, no friends coming round, no sprouts, no tree, but worst of all, no annual shopping spree. Okay, that was absolutely brilliant. Lovely to see both the groups there and, and the difference between the adults and, and the young people and how, uh, how they changed, what they were talking about and things like that. So uh, we're just going to go to Paul for a second because we've had a couple of comments come through um, about where people get inspiration from. Is that right, Paul? Yeah, so um, we've had um, someone comment saying they take inspiration from the surroundings and uh, pictures when they're writing and stuff. So that's completely different way of another different way of taking inspiration isn't it to when writing a book that's interesting because i've um set so many tasks during lockdown um about 25 different tasks mm -hmm. uh, times two um for the kids as well um one of the things i started doing was just choosing a photograph a really interesting photograph from the media and giving them really not much 
more information and saying, write me a story about what's happening here. So that's a really good way to do it if you're struggling for inspiration. Fantastic. Uh, and I believe, Paul, we, we, had one, we had a comment earlier, didn't we, about the um, about a website and we, yeah. we were saying oh, we, hadn't had, we hadn't seen that website or heard of the website before but you've done a little bit of, of research and it looks like a, an interesting find is that right yeah yeah so um, I just I just did a quick Google search um, brought it up and it looks really really colorful really interesting so it'd be a great resource for um, children it looks like um, and what's I, that one called again so that was uh, the night zookeeper the Night Zookeeper. It does sound like a creative writing title, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, the Night 100%. Zookeeper. Uh, and it looks like it's available on uh, apps as well. So people have got tablets there as well, and they've also got books. They've got a bookshop. Fantastic. Well. So, all right. uh, give it a look. Give it a look. That's all I can suggest. Brilliant. Look through yeah, it and see yeah. if it's for you. Thanks very much for. I think was it the Learning Labs that sent in that. that learning comment? Labs. Yeah, so in, yeah. we're learning as well as as, as we're doing this. Absolutely brilliant. Every day is a school day. So, um, Wayne, I believe that you've got, as well as the books we've been talking about, we've got some other books that are going to be coming out. Yes, very much so. And totally focused around the work produced during lockdown. Um, we received so much work back, um, adult stories, children's stories, poetry, um, that the studio has decided to release three um, wow. separate books. Um, all focused around lockdown. Um, yes. Which one is coming first, Lou? The poetry will come first. Yeah. And um, that's also got illustrations from Paula, um, the <gasps> author and illustrator of the uh, hair with the green eyes. And um, each one of those poems, she's she's drawn a little kind of lock and key because we were working on the lockdown. Um, theme. Not all the poems are about lockdown, mm. but they're mm. uh, written either during it or yeah. inspired by. Um, and you've kind of picked picked them, gone through them, yes. and um, and then yeah, we've uh, we've put the illustrations together, and we're just building them now. And we've we've decided to to go a different path other than Amazon because yeah. obviously, obviously people um, from the group have started to um, do self publishing. Mm -hmm. So we thought, okay, well they know that now. We'll go down a different route of, of s still self publishing, mm -hmm. but not in the in the set in a different format. Yeah. Again, pushing it, changing it, and just trying and, and showing different ways of being able to do things. And then the next two are the lockdown literature adults and kids and uh, they're all all things that have come from the the sessions that, that Wayne's been doing during lockdown so really excited about getting them together and they've got illustrations as yes, well yes big points because you actually advertised didn't you for artists to do illustrations oh. for the stories um, and again something different you know one of the kind of main things about what we do is trying to provide the the space whether it be in the building or or during um lockdown at home uh, for you to get creative and to try different things out but also um the way you can share it because that is kind of sometimes the block of well i can write and i've done it i've proved to myself lovely tick star that's what you should be doing anyway but also then there's the sharing you know taking mm. it to that next stage of going it's good enough mm. let someone let someone enjoy it let someone else kind of let it have its next part of its life um so one of the things we wanted to do is then push the writers the authors again by saying okay let that poem or the um the story um be the inspiration for an illustrator so again, people from the community, both kind of com um, community-based and, and professionals, but um, people interested in, in illustrating, drawing, sketching, painting, whatever, um, they got sort of paired up with a, a, a piece of writing and then they, they drew something sort of in response to that. And then we worked on, you know, kind of the, how that will look, what the style is, There's a few alterations here and there yep. just to kind of get there. But um, it was a really interesting process. Mm, something you wouldn't do necessarily yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it, again, we encourage people to do the things they can do by themselves and, and give them the skills and the, the confidence to do that. But then just push it by going, and now what if we try this? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, <involved>, ah! <laughs> and involve that whole section. Yeah, the, bringing the, the, the groups artists, together as yeah. well from the studio. So it's, we 
did get some new people um, coming forward to illustrate, but we also had people that were attending Georgina's art space yeah. classes as well. Um, and it was a way of kind of getting them to focus on a project during lockdown and then bring it back in that little gap when we were allowed to come back together. It was in August or something. Yeah. Um, and we brought everyone together. We picked everything and now we're back working on it separately. But um, it was a good kind of timing, really. Yeah. And we're hoping to get them out by Easter or, or at least the first one anyway. So we're not rushing anything. We're making sure it's a good quality product that the authors and illustrators are proud of. Fantastic. I think what it will be, yeah, just, just to chip in, yeah. what it will be is, is proof of, of the creativity um, that went on during lockdown mm. and how the studio helped that, but also how the people themselves had the will to, to create mm. during that period of time. It, it sounds absolutely brilliant. There's there's so many things going on there. Uh, Louise, I don't think we actually properly <laughs> introduced you into the industry, but like, but but uh, known for acting, running so many creative projects from from the studio and and voiceovers for us in the past and and, and everything in between. Uh, gosh, I think probably knowing each other now for about ten years in working in and around Halton and and doing. Uh, creative projects and something that we've spoke about a few times is is that pipeline you know of creativity and it not just being something that you try once and then mm. you have a nice you might have a nice time in it and then that, yeah. that ends but like that ability to kind of move it forward and to challenge people and to move and so just hearing that then i was kind of in awe in, in how nicely they they slot together they can fit together you can use other other groups of creatives to kind of help inspire each other and, and to bringing them together to be able to help mm. publish and move things forward is it sounds like a, a brilliant project and I can't wait to kind of find out more about when they're coming out, where they're going out. And as soon as we, we know details, we'll be sure to push them out everywhere so we can we can get them going. But yeah, um, there's so much creativity going on here where we are at the studio. When we when we first decided to move Holt and Make Fest um, online, we were going to go, where are we going to go? Which is going to be a big enough space for us to be able to social distance. It's going to have internet that's going to feel like an actual um, home of creativity and a place you know that is suitable for doing this and we're so lucky to have in Holton a venue like the studio that's home to so many things like this do you want to give us a a bit of a, a an overview of some of the other things that the studio does how long have you got i know yeah a brief <laughs> brief brief yeah well yeah i mean we've we, we tried to um uh, when we when we first went, went to lockdown, as as Wayne said, way, way back in March, it was the twenty first of March, actually, the day before lockdown was announced, or uh, whenever it was, it was it was two days before or something. Um, we kind of tried to emulate the timetable that we already have. Mm. So singing on a Monday. Um, at the time, we didn't have anything on Tuesday, but Wayne now hosts um, a, a reading group as well with yes. one of our studio mm -hmm. associates, Helen, who um, wanted to create a, re a reading group during lockdown. So we, we enabled that. And then Wednesdays, we used to have sessions here. So we've kind of tried to keep... Um, we did sessions here, but also... Um, events so mm. wednesday was a bit of an event day so um what we tried to do is if we've got any events or special kind of one-off stuff we put that on a wednesday but we've also got the glow group which is the lgbt group from um we work in partnership with Holborough council to deliver that and they've got a great session tonight which is looking at the history of pop um which would be brilliant um and then thursdays we sort of used to do a bit of um writing a radio sitcom on a Thursday night, but it was a bit ad hoc. We were just sort of using that time. So now we've created something called the Studio Actors, which we do the radio sitcom. We read each other's writing, plays-wise. We work on new productions. We did a, a great sort of combined production with Victoria Music Limited mm -hmm. or VLM, as, as they known, with, with great Rob, who... Um, who does our singing group for us on a Saturday for the kids as well. So we work together with them. So we wanted that space on a Thursday to do those um, kind of uh, creative projects that are about performance yeah. and also for, to enable people to build those skills. Like you were saying in the adult and the kids videos, they're performing. It's not just writing mm -hmm. and then reading it out loud. It's like performing it and videoing it. So, you know, we wanted a space to create those kind of activities um, and be able to sort of slot them in when wonderful opportunities come up. Fridays, we've left a bit clear. We used to have a really busy Friday but we sort of left it clear for when we can do one-off gigs and things like that. Saturdays has always been ram jammed hasn't it so Oof. we do uh, Wayne's adults and kids now on a Saturday yeah. and Rob's kids singing and we do tambourine tots now we started two weeks ago and we're so excited to have tambourine <laughs> tots back um, and we've got a bit of story time in that as well so one of our associates which are our volunteers if, if one of my say an associates 
volunteers who kind of do more things and they um, take responsibility, which has been fantastic mm. during lockdown. People have took on more and have sort of led with things themselves. And so we've got all that. And then Wayne does his one-to-ones in the afternoon. Yeah. And then we have on a Sunday, the jam group. And we also have our new record label meeting. Mm -hmm. So Loose Community Records is a new thing where we're looking at sort of just make, helping people who have not quite got to the stage of releasing anything mm -hmm. or have released something but haven't done anything with it or have got to the stage where they need it mixing or they need help doing stuff at home because they've not got a home recording studio. It's kind of gathering those together and sort of learning about what you need to do to write your bio, get photographs, get videos, finish your work get it out there, where to host it, all that band camp and stuff like that. And um, that's kind of Sunday afternoons now, and we're going to be uh, releasing a compilation soon, download, what, you know, kind of get bringing all these people together again. So there's loads of stuff you going can, on. I've you probably can see forgot what somewhere. I meant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when when schools and everybody else kind of closed down yeah. and locked down, the studio just went boom. I was, I was <laughs> going to say then, when you, when you were going through all that work then, it, it, it reminded me straight away yeah. of when you were saying that the studio reacted really quickly to kind of being able to do things online, yeah. being there and being able to provide that service. And I definitely spotted it and noticed it, you know, from, uh, from the outside looking in. There was, there was live streams going up. There was things yeah. being tried out. There was groups being sorted. I remember my one of my favourite memories, and I know Ian's been been to uh, Tambourine Tots as well with, with some of his youngers, you know, and it's a very popular uh, event when it, you know, when we were when you were able to do it kind of live in here. We even had Tambourine Tots at Makefest last year. Oh yeah, it was like a flashback of it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 wandering around and, and you know, and it being a family event and something that, that's suitable for everyone. And, and you had the stage, of course, at Makefest last year, so we had all yeah. sorts of different things going on yeah. there uh, at that. And and yeah, no, and you might not be able to tell from from where we are and the way that we put it here but the studio has this fantastic stage so when we're allowed to be next to each other there's always gigs and performances and all sorts going on here so to have uh, transformed it from yeah. you know from being a kind of a, a, a venue that people can come to not just to watch events you obviously had workshops and activities and a recording studio and, and everything else in here but to, to do that real quick spin around from being that to being a, a venue that is uh, able to host these events to really you know it, you've done an absolutely fantastic job of making sure that you're still able to cater for people's creative needs and creative, you know, like uh, yeah. well-being as as a throughout Absolutely. lockdown. Absolutely, uh, and we're, we're really we're really lucky because we've got our funding from the National Lottery from Reaching Community Fund, and you know they supported us to keep going and to tra transform the way that we operate. And you know we really do understand that we were in a really lucky position to be as it was then in our second year of funding. We're actually in our third and coming up to the end of that oh, funding, so it gets a little bit hairy now, <laughs> but. Um, you know what we've what we've wanted to do is just kind of provide that platform that people kind of can build their own ideas mm. from as well so you know like with Helen coming to us about the reading mm. group and mm. you know some of our younger associates of a 15 and 16 year old running a, a, a Instagram online gig you know open mic kind of thing you know we've, we've we've tried to say it's not just about us delivering to people it's about yeah. them kind of coming with us and building it up that's the whole po point of being so kind of um solidly put into the community mm. we, we we're not something that you know is just kind of there and it's gone it, it has to be about reacting to what the community wants and we're always we're always up for that so we always say if you've got ideas you know come and join our quiz on the 3rd of March which is the first Wednesday of every month and uh, we're gonna have a quiz and we have a catch-up so that we can we can hear those ideas it doesn't have to be a big proposal that people do you know they can kind of say this is my idea what about that and we'll go yeah that might fit in here and let's you know that that's the thing we want to be able to do and we hope that the studio will be able to be that for people for a long time to come Brilliant. That sounds amazing. So we heard about loads and loads of different groups uh, that you've got going on and things like that. Uh, similar to the creative writing, if somebody wants to get involved in it, is that just a case of them heading over to your website and sending you an email or a message through there and letting them know what they're interested in or, or even like you were saying them what they would like to see? Yeah. Uh, because one thing that we, we mentioned it with a place to us is, is that the studio is is part and Loose Music are part of Cultivate, which is, is the group of, of uh, creative organisations in Houghton that are all trying to work together 
to bring more creative opportunities to young people in the area. And it's, it's one of those great things now. I really think there's, there's a lot of opportunity to kind of go, even if it's like, we're not running a, an activity that's like that, doesn't mean that there's not somebody yeah. else that's running something along Absolutely. there as well. And so, yeah, if, 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 if the best, if, email the best way for people to get in email, contact? Email's great. And we also have a mailing list that people can click onto on the website. So they can click on that link and, and they'll get their, it's more or less monthly kind of mail outs mm. where we send anything new out or just updates as well. But we do try and respond on all social media, really. A lot of people prefer to sort of DM us, um, yeah. and that's fine. You know, we, we understand that, you know, we, we want people to feel comfortable. Mm. So we try to kind of respond in as many ways as possible. So, but email is, is kind of like the fastest, I suppose. I like that terminology you use, uh, try, because that's what I'm like when, it, when you get, get messages through Twitter and yeah. Facebook what and Instagram and you're trying to like, you're trying to, and I also like to, your, uh, your, the, uh, the newsletter being mainly monthly. And again, that's, that's for me, because that's how we Flexible. like to say, yeah, there's not, there's not a set date. It's uh, probably once a month we might send you one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, We're real. <laughs> going through there. Uh, fantastic. So um, before we get out of here, I believe we've got we've got one more video uh, to show. Do you want to let us know what, what this video is? Yeah, I just thought it'd be really nice to, to sort of link in and um, kind of support what Wayne has, has been doing, because as well as the classes running, he touched on sort of other things that we were doing. And one of the things was he was regularly set in weekly, actually, it was on a Saturday mm. morning, set in a story thread mm. and, and also lateral thinking exercises. So we had them one day where we'd put the um, question out and and then people would sort of try and answer it and then we'd put the answer out. And then on a Saturday, we'd have a, a line of a story and we'd say, right, you write the next line and we'd do it on either Facebook or um, Twitter. And then we'd put them together and film them and and kind of just pop them out there and i think one of the things about lockdown is we all just jumped into it straight away going yeah it doesn't matter come on just do it um and so we've got all this stuff there <laughs> that we're going oh, i've forgotten about that you know and we've got all this stuff so wayne was setting that and it's a really nice kind of way of saying that you know if you're not ready to join the mm. groups or you're not ready to write and be I think one of the things you've got to be ready for is for somebody else to read your work. Yeah. That would be my fear. You're going to read it and you're going to judge me and you're going to think that I'm mm -hmm. rubbish. You know, so this way you're writing one line and you're writing with other people and it doesn't matter how wild it gets. So I just thought it'd be great to show a, an example of this. And Meg is reading this one. I think it's from July or it's quite early on anyway. Um, and yeah, the first line had been set by Wayne and then everyone else has jumped in and created something. So we usually had two, one from Twitter, one from Facebook. So we can't know to this we need to do something with it publicly. <laughs> I, I uh I got involved and I did I don't think it was this one but I but I remember doing it and before I've said I've never done it creative right I think that I think that this that, that one but I loved it it was it was a great way of being able to um to like dip your toe into it like yeah. you said and I really enjoyed that kind of like reading on that first line and going do you know what yeah what would I do in this for this next <laughs> section and stuff and and then seeing it and then it being mentioned and someone else going on to the yeah. next line and stuff it's a like really that and nice group way it, of doing it yeah it's it's a really I I really enjoyed it, and, and as you say, I, I, I was I was actually lying in bed when I first when I, when I saw it. Come up. I was yeah, when yeah, I yeah, wrote when, the first line. <laughs> like, like, like when I saw it come up on Twitter, and I was like, but it was just such a great kind of like, oh, do you know what? Then I'm gonna I'm gonna have a little bit of a think, and I only need to write you know ten ten words, something like that, and yes. suddenly you've got you've yeah. got you're in there and you're part of it, and. And then reading what everyone else came up with was just so fun. And then and then listening to it when it was completed back again. There were so many nice bits of it. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's brilliant. Let's let's have a look at this one then and see uh, see how how people the story that, that was brought together by everyone. This is the studio storytelling thread from Saturday, the thirteenth of June. This is the Facebook one. After a fabulous night's sleep, I slowly opened my eyes to discover that I had somehow been transported overnight to a desert island. I felt the sun hot on my body, and as I tried to stand in the soft white sand and wiggle my toes, I looked down and saw my feet had been replaced by a ginormous whale's tail. So I did what anyone would in that situation, and shuffled my way down the sand into the sea. The sea was warm and inviting. For the very first time, as I swam beneath the water, I felt that I was really at home. My tummy rumbled as a school of plankton passed by me. I helped myself to a mouthful and couldn't believe how absolutely delicious it tasted. Suddenly appearing from behind a mass of flowing seaweed, I noticed a creature. 
that somehow I strangely recognised. It was a mermaid. She was waving at me, either being very friendly, or did she want me to follow? I swam over to the beautiful creature. Cautiously I approached, she swam ahead, still waving me forward. After a short while, a bright and luminous light filled the seas. The closer we got, the lights organised themselves into words. It said, Neptunes, the best nightclub on the ocean floor. Karaoke tonight. Wow, I wonder if I'll get a spot. What could I sing? And just as the opening bars to Delilah filled Neptunes, I opened my eyes to realise that my desert island was in fact my bed. And I'd been dreaming all along. Reality swept through me as the realisation of what I'd learned last night hit me. Surely last night was the real dream. Well, there you go. That's what you folks came up with. Well, that was absolutely brilliant. Amazing. You don't know. You just don't know where it's going to go, do you? Next <laughs> those with the twists and turns of, of, of a story like that. Um, thank you, everyone, for, for tuning in to this episode of uh, Holton Makefest, all around creative writing. Thanks to Wayne, thanks to Louise, thanks to the rest of the team here for putting together. Just before we get out, uh, we have got uh, there is an event coming up that we wanted to uh, to let people know about. I believe Ian that we've got a we've got a poster that we can potentially let show people as well. Is that right? There it is. Yeah, Lu Louise, do you want to um, let us know? Uh, oh wait, do you want to let us know about about, about this? Well, this is the the uh, regular session for your young people. Yes, in it's the regular session. Fantastic um, for ah. my seven to eleven, I believe. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, so le when's the when is remind me again? When is the seven to eleven? Uh, the session? seven to elevens at the moment. We tend to do two 45 minute sessions, so mm -hmm. we can run from between two and three thirty. Yeah. On a Saturday, on a that's Saturday. important. Yeah. And, it, and if my memory serves me right, you are doing your adults on the same day. We don't have a poster for that one, but if you'd like to join in, you, you definitely can do. And so yeah. adults on the same day, what time are the, it's the adults It's from on? 11 to 11.30, but that's just to launch the task with them on Zoom. Oh, And fantastic. then they get the task emailed to them as well. Ah, a bit of... Yeah. I believe they call that flipping the classroom. So yeah, do they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. I've been, I've been thinking about having a go at doing something like that. So yeah, yeah. But, but um, absolutely brilliant. So yeah, if you are interested in either the creative writing sessions or any of the other cool things that the studio are doing, mm. please uh, let them know. You can head over to a website uh, and send them an email, or as you heard, DM them. Uh, direct message then that's the same thing dm a direct message <laughs> send them a send them a personal message on on facebook um or instagram i'm sure they'll pick it up and let them know and yeah absolutely brilliant so just less to say thank you everyone for tuning in uh and sending in your questions paul just before we go i believe that we did get we have had a couple of responses is that is that right yeah that's great uh we have had a few people send in some paragraphs already uh, so what we'll do is we'll have a quick read through them, uh, check them, and then we'll, we'll use yeah, them in we'll, our social media. We'll sure to pass them on to Wayne as yeah, well to, yes. to, so he can cast an eye on them. So thanks very much. Please keep sending them in. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll find our favourite yeah. ones and we'll be posting them out and things like that. But yeah, thanks everyone so much for tuning in and being part of our creative writing session. Uh, we are back tomorrow, 10 a.m. tomorrow, 3 p.m. tomorrow, and then on Friday, two more. So we've still got loads more creative sessions to come up. Uh, yeah, so... Please be sure to check us out on Facebook and Eventbrite and everywhere else that you are going and use the hashtag, hashtag HoltonMF on all your social media pl uh, platforms for us to be able to see what you've been doing and how you've been getting creative. Thank you very much and we'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.